In this presentation, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about word recognition and solidification, which will assist you with our projects in class. So with word recognition, phonics, syllabication, we're talking about looking in context, sight words, morphemic analysis, and structural analysis, or probably more commonly referred to as chunking. So phonemic awareness concepts were covered in a previous video, as was phonics, thinking about different parts of phonics, um, whole to part to whole, sight words, word families, um, but National Reading Panel says a phonics analysis approach uh, can leave gaps. With structural morphemic analysis, we're talking about thinking about roots and bases, affixes, which we're talking about prefixes, suffixes, um, compound words, can, um, learning this helps students to understand when there's a prefix or a suffix, how it changes the meaning, how it may change the pronunciation as well. Another portion of this is syllabication, which we will focus on pretty intensely. A reason for teaching it um, is to help students when they're chunking words and being able to figure out how to pronounce the different chunks of the syllables and words. Things to think about when you are approaching syllables. Every syllable has one vowel sound. So when you're breaking apart syllables, you are finding the vowel sound and breaking amongst it. The number of vowel sounds in the words is the number of syllables you have in a word. Home, there is one vowel sound, there's one syllable in the word. Subject, two vowel sounds, two syllables. Publishing, three syllables, there are three different vowel sounds. A one syllable word is never divided into more than one syllable function. Stop, one syllable. Feet bell. We are not dividing those. You would be just coding the vowel sound in that word. Consonant blends and digraphs are never separated. So the ng and resting is going to go together. Bushel. The sh goes with the bu. Reaching. The ch goes with the ea in reach. If you have a CK or an X, we are usually dividing after that CK or X. So Nick, O, we divide it after the CK. Tax is a one syllable word. A compound word would be divided between the two words that make the compound word, like inside, it's divided after the in and before side. Football, foot and ball. Toothbrush, toothbrush. You would then code those individual words. When two or more consonants come between vowels in a word, it's usually divided between the first two consonants. Sis, ter, so you divide after the s before the ter. Butter, hungry. You have, when you have a single consonant between two vowels, it's usually divided after the consonant if the if the vowel is short. Lever, cabin, habit. So you're dividing after that single consonant. When it comes between two vowels in the word, it's usually divided before the consonant if it's long. Basin, fever, major. So difference being with it's a short vowel sound or a long vowel sound where you divide the syllables. When you see these sheets, and there is an activity that you will have to do about this, um, this first part is working on marking up the syllables, so just dividing the syllables. So you might want to stop and jot these down. How would you divide these seven or eight words into first syllable and second syllable? So pause the video, do that, and then in a moment I will show the answers. So if you've divided the syllables like this, you have done it correctly and identified what are the different 
syllable breaks. We will do the rest of this activity in a few minutes. So there are six types of syllables. I know online I have seen at times seven types of syllables and the difference being um, they differentiate between the types of vowels, the double vowels, but we're gonna focus on six types of syllables so that when you go back and do this and identifying the types of syllables, you will be using one of these six options. There's a closed syllable. It ends in a consonant and only has one vowel the vowel is short. So when you look at these different words, so we have up, hat, ship, last, your vowel sound is a short sound, it's a closed syllable. So what you would do would be um, do the little half moon above the short vowel sound and the indication when you're doing the syllable markup what type of syllable it is would be a C for closed. There's a vowel consonant E syllable. Many of you probably affectionately refer to this as the magic E rule. The E is silent and your first vowel has the long vowel sound. Bike, ape, stove. So for the marking of this, you're gonna indicate the long vowel sound with the um, line indication over the long vowel and you cross out the E because you don't hear the E sound. And it would be coded as a vowel dash E, so a vowel consonant E syllable. Open syllables are gonna end with a single vowel. It might be the only vowel in the syllable. Um, the vowel is going to have the long sound, like I, B, shy, high. In this indication, like the previous one, for the long vowel sound, you're going to have a line above the letter that's making the long sound and you're going to use the O for open when you're coding the type of syllable. For consonant LE um, it's going to be at the end of the word. The E is silent but it's present because every syllable needs a vowel. Um, the consonant and the L are the ones that are the voiced not the E. So cradle you don't hear an E. Little you don't hear an E. Bubble, you don't hear the E. So we've got the consonant, L-E. Similar to the previous one, you're not going to um, indicate the E is voiced, so you're gonna cross it out. So um, consonant, L-E, would be indicated with the dash L-E when you're marking up this type of syllable and identifying what type it is. R controlled syllables, vowels when next to an R do different things. It's not a long A, it's not a short A, but when you've got the R, like start, you don't hear a clear, long, or short A. The R takes over, you probably know this as the bossy R. The R takes over whatever the vowel sound is. It's controlled by the R. So whenever you have a vowel next to R, it's an R-controlled syllable, like art. So again, not a clear, long, or short sound, but the R takes over. So you're gonna circle the vowel and the R, and you're indicating that it's an R-controlled syllable when you're marking this up. So like I said, we don't need to necessarily define it's a diphthong or a digraph, lucky for you. You just need to identify if the letters are a double vowel. Um, so when you're doing the double vowel sound, if it's either a vowel diphthong or a vowel digraph, um, you are circling the two vowel words and indicating that it's a double vowel. So this is the time to go back to what you jotted down earlier and work on marking up the syllable. So you have to do it like you see here, if it's a double vowel, you're gonna circle the two letters and indicate that it's a double vowel in the second column or the fourth column and try this activity. So pause the video and give it a try here. This is the answer key for the entire activity. A few comments, because it's also in your book chapter about sight words. Um, sight words include both 
all the words that are known by sight as well as high frequency words. The high frequency words um, identified by Fry found that 25 words make up approximately one third of all items that are published. 100 words comprise about half of all the words and publications. And there are 300 words that make up approximately 65% of all written material. So high frequency words are different than sight words in that they are the words that occur most commonly in published materials. Sight words are any words that we have learned by sight that you no longer have to decode. I'm sure many of you are familiar with Fry's word list. He has up to a thousand, but generally we probably spend the most time with the first 300 words. This paragraph is just a random paragraph taken from News ELA, in the Lexile 750. You can feel free to pause and read it if you want. This is the paragraph when you take out all the high frequency words. So when you look through this paragraph, it's actually pretty hard to understand what it's actually talking about besides the concept of a monic butterfly because we take out all of those high frequency words. Sight word recognition, something you can take a moment to do, um, I'll click on it right now, is once you've learned how to decode, chunk, recognize words, they generally become part of your sight word vocabulary, so you no longer have to um, decode those words. So follow along right here, and you can read through this activity. This is at 250 words per minute. So if you're looking at this and reading, it's unlikely that you are stopping to decode any of these words because they're part of your sight word vocabulary. So in place of when you were a young child and had to decode and use all the syllabication rules that I just recovered in this presentation, these are now part of your sight word vocabulary and you no longer need to decode it. It's one of the major goals of reading instruction is to make many words sight words so students know what they mean and no longer have to decode them.